how do I use absolute addressing in my spreadsheet? What does that even mean, absolute addressing? Okay, let me explain. Um, let me explain this. Um, in the previous screencast, I came up with a list of all the different programs that Factor offered in the year 2012, in the calendar year 2012, and we need this. We we use this really cool trick in Text Wrangler to do this. We ended up with this list. Okay, we've got 23 programs total here. Over on this side, this is the sum if function that we wrote a couple screencasts ago, and that adds up. That basically looks up all the data on this sheet and it basically looks at all the programs here and if it matches the program name over in in cell A1 in this case uh, then it uh, it sums up all the money that was given as part of that program. So in this case we can see that in 2012 Factor offered uh, over $667,000 under the business development program. What if I wanted to figure that out for all of these? Okay, um, I'm sure you figured out by now that um, you're not going to hand write this this function for every single one here. You could but you don't need to. You know, What would you do? Would you be tempted to just use use this? We've done this before right where we've just dragged um, functions or drag, you've probably done this before, you just drag formulas or drag functions down. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring that all the way down. Wow, look at that. And it automatically calculated all that. Okay, or did it? Do you think that these numbers are right? Let's think about that. Do you think all of these numbers are right? I just dragged all those down. They look right, you know, like, I mean, they're all different. Um, are they right? Okay, well, how would we check this to make sure that it's right? I'm not going to go and manually add everything up, okay? But what's one way that we could check to see whether this actually this actually worked? And this is a good idea to check your work, by the way, the, the, because the computer's probably not going to make mistakes, but you might have made a mistake in your instructions to the computer, and that's a really important thing to check. What would you do? Well, personally, what I would do is I would try adding this up, and if I sum this up, what should that number be? It should be the same thing as this number, shouldn't it, right? Because if you add up every single individual award, right, and you come up with, you know, $13.8 million, you know, it's logical that if you add up each of the different categories and then add up those totals, because these are really just subtotals, right, you should get the same number, right? Okay, so let's see what happens. What's the formula? This is one of the first functions that we learned. What's the function for summing? Yeah, it's just the equal sum, or I can just use this little sum function wizard here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's just going to add all this up. We're expecting it to be like $13.8 million. Let's see if that's what it is. I'm going to go ahead and click accept. It's not. We're short. Now that's confusing, isn't it? Okay, why do you think that we're short? Why do you think that number is not correct? Okay, I'm gonna let you think about that for a couple seconds. Well, and we know that this is incorrect. Let's let's kind of have a look at this this formula. This formula, I feel pretty confident is correct. This is the first thing that we did. Let's go below and let's start looking at the rest of these formulas. Okay. Um, so all right, we we see some if factor 2012. That means that it's that it's referring to this sheet over here. And do you see the problem? What's the problem that we have here? Okay. It's referring to A2 or A3 to A1645. Okay, let's just go back here. It's looking at the data starting here and going down to here. So we're off by one. And why is that? Okay, well, let's keep going. And then A2 goes down. It's referring to business travel. That makes sense. That was what we wanted, right? And then it's adding up the numbers between, again, D3 to D1645. That's not what we wanted, right? We wanted D2 to D1644. So, and see, as we go down, we see all the numbers increase. That's because, by default, LibreOffice uses what's called relative addressing. When you drag things down, you are, in a sense, telling LibreOffice, hey, I am increasing the row number by one. And so LibreOffice automatically adds that. It automatically increases the row number by one for everything. 
okay? In most cases, that's what you want. Like in this case, could you imagine if I screw, if I drag this down and it kept referencing A1 for business development? That's not at all what we want. We want to reference the name that's next to here, right? Um, and so, you know, LibreOffice is trying to be smart. And in most cases, that is the behavior we want. But in certain cases, we don't want that behavior. In this case, we actually want these ranges, these criteria ranges, the sum range. We want those ranges to stay static. We want that to be the same. We do not want the row number to change. And so in that case, we need to use absolute addresses. We're going to, we need to lock the row in order to say, hey, don't move the row. I know you want to move the row. Don't move it. I'm serious. I want you to leave this row. Okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to delete all of these. Okay. I'm just going to delete that. And we're going to leave this right now. We're going to leave this, this, uh, um, this total right here for now, okay? Up here, what we're going to do is we're going to use the symbol that we use to lock the row, and the symbol is just the dollar sign, and I'm going to place it right before the row number. You can also place it uh, in front of the column number. In this case, we don't need to lock the column number because we're not changing columns, okay? But we do need to lock the row number, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and add this to lock the row number, and I'm going to do the same thing down over here. I'm going to lock the row number by adding that dollar sign in front. What do you think? Do I need to lock the row number here in A1? Do I need to add a dollar sign in front of the 1? What do you think? Yes or no? No, I don't want to, right? If I lock that, then that means everything. It's just going to do the same calculation over and over again. It's just going to look up business development. What I wanted to do is I wanted to look at the same range but look up different values every single time. So we're going to leave that um, as is. So we've locked all the rows except for that A1, that criteria, okay, and that's what we wanted. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Now that didn't actually change the formula here because it will never, locking a row doesn't actually change, you know, the, the answer for the formula. But what it allows us to do when we lock the row is that now we can use that same trick that we used before by pulling this down and it's going to automatically copy that function all the way down. Let me let that go. And now this is correct. It continually, as you go down here, you see what is the only thing that is changing? The only thing that is changing as I go down here is just the criteria. You've got exactly the same function, but only the only thing that's changing is that criteria. It's just referencing a new criteria every single time. Okay? And is this correct? So is my answer correct? Okay, did I do this right? Well, let's see. Here's our sum. It adds up to $13,868,405, and that's exactly correct. So that's how you do it, okay? Um, you use the, that's the difference between absolute addressing and relative addressing, and, and it's really important to know when to use uh, either one, okay? So just remember that dollar sign is how you lock the, the either the column or the row, and, and in this case, we wanted to lock the row, um, and that's it. And I know these functions are looking really complicated, but when you just take your time step by step, you can you can you can decipher this. You can understand what's going on. Okay, um, that's it for now. I hope that that's helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.